I'm reading a couple of books right now. One of them is called uh, Secrets of Mental Marksmanship. I have it right here. There's like a couple of them online. So I wanted to show it, you what the cover looks like so you can get the right one. But this is a really good book. Um, it pertains not only to shooting, but to life. And I'm not going to get into the details of it here right now, but there is a, there's one little sentence here I wanted to read to you. It'll tie into where I'm going here. It says 80 to 90% of your physical performance will depend on how you think. When I read that for the first time, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> that's crazy. 80 to 90% of your physical performance will depend on how you think. Wow. I mean, some of us have work to do, right? <laughs> so I think that just means we can learn the skill all day long. We can have tons and tons of skill. But if we don't work on this, then we might we might not be as good as we can be. So um, your most powerful weapon is right here. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me just give you some three steps to just be more safe in your everyday surroundings, because not everybody here maybe carries every day. Maybe you're not quite there yet. And maybe you're just, you're new to this and you're just thinking like, where do I even begin? Like, what, what can you do to help me just right out of the gate? Here's, here's a few things that I can tell you. The first thing in, in, in the gun world that we, we call it situational awareness, Adam, I know you don't like that, but um, it's called situational awareness. What it really means is just paying attention to your surroundings. It sounds really, really simple and easy, but I bet if you really paid attention to uh, your everyday interactions, like what you do when you're waiting for your gas to pump into your car or what you do when you get out of the grocery store, you put the groceries in the car. What's the first thing you do when you get in the car? I bet you it is you get in, you shut the door and you look at your phone. Am I right? Well, the reason I know that is because I had to kind of take inventory of what I was doing. Once I learned some of these things, I realized, wow, I'm really not paying attention as much as I should be. And I would venture to say that a vast majority of Americans pay very little attention to what's going on around them at any given time. It is shocking and almost scary how close we allow people to get to us in public areas. If you've ever been in a mall or even a grocery store, I mean, people are practically breathing down your neck. And we don't even think anything of that, guys. Um, and when you think about what someone could do to you and how close they need to be to you in order to get to you, it, it's kind of scary. Um, so the more that you pay attention, okay, so tell me, can somebody tell me why they think that paying attention would potentially save your life? What does paying attention do? Bueller <laughs> buys you options. Catherine, very good. Gives you time. Yes, exactly. So if you're paying attention, then you could potentially see something out of the corner of your eye, or you could notice somebody that seems out of place, right? In your environment. Guys, we all have this. We have this intuition, especially us women. We have this intuition to know when something's off. Pay attention to your gut instinct. If something seems off, just go someplace else if you need to. Walk away from that situation. Uh, whatever you need to do to remove yourself or just get yourself in a, in a, in a better uh, position, so to speak, so you can be aware even more of that person or whatever that situation is, right? Um, what I would recommend is that you just, you just remove yourself from it, you know? Um, so paying attention is key. It's going to buy you time and it's going to probably buy you distance and distance and time are your friends when it comes to self-defense. You do not want to be ambushed. That's what predators do to prey and you don't want to be prey. Okay. So let's see. Um, okay. So once you've kind of paid attention to your surroundings and you've kind of paid attention to your habits every day, um, Another thing that a lot of people don't think about unless you've had this training already is running uh, scenarios in your mind. When you go to a restaurant and you sit down at the table, which should be at a, in a position, hopefully, where you can get away quickly and also you can see what's going on everywhere around you, right? Um, you should be able to uh, run a scenario through your head, okay? 
just means like, hey, if somebody came in that door right now and started shooting, what would I do? If I was um, coming out of the bathroom and somebody came after me, what would I do? Just little things like that. Make sure you run the scenario all the way through, guys, though. Make sure you run it all the way through and make sure that you win at the end of the scenario. It sounds really cheesy, but trust me. Okay. So running scenarios. Why do you think running scenarios could be advantageous? Remember, we're talking about this up here. Any ideas? Well, how could that help you? I mean, let's say you've got all the skills in the world. You've been, you've been training and shooting. You're a very good shooter, but you've never really thought about what could happen. So what, how could running scenarios help you? So the reason scenarios are important is because, yes, reduces surprise factors so you have a plan so you're less likely to freeze or guess. This is true. Your body can't go where your mind has never been. If your mind's been there, at least you have, you have something in your brain that can like be cued to, to go into action. So you're not, you don't freeze up. That's a big key. And, and after this next point, Adam, I'll open it up to you as well. And you can chime in if you, I mean, it's not the Laura show. I mean, <laughs> it's defenders weekly, not Laura weekly. Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to tell you is do everything you can to avoid the situation guys do not escalate a situation. It is not worth your life. It is not worth your family's life. You being in prison and not being around just so you can pretend like you're the big guy in the, in the, in the room, right? We got to be humble about this. We, we have to be smart. Um, having a gun on you does not give you permission to be a jerk. In fact, I highly recommend against it. I would say having a gun on you gives you a higher level of personal responsibility moral responsibility and otherwise. And you should take that very seriously because I don't want to see any of you going to prison uh, or having to go through the legal system. Adam knows all about that. He can speak to that. But the last thing I'll say, and then I'll hand it to you if you have anything to say, Adam, is only use your firearm as a last resort. A firearm is not a tool to threaten somebody with or to try to bluff somebody it is only when you are your backs up against the wall and you have no other options. That's when you hopefully never have to, but have the right to use it and defend yourself. All right. I'm already tired of talking to you guys. Okay. Adam, anything to add? So yeah, I'll jump in here. Uh, I'm actually going to go back to kind of what all you were saying. I've been writing some notes here, right? Talking about situational awareness is commonly known, known, right? I, uh, to me, it's it's kind of a myth to be truly situationally aware because it's impossible. We have two eyes and a 360 degree environment to truly pay attention to everything, right? So it's really paying attention to the things that are different. If your environment changes in a way that makes you feel go, something's just not right. And we all know what it's like when something's just not right. It, 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 and I found here in first world countries that we Americans oftentimes would be comfortable, become comfortable enough that we'll bury our heads in our cell phones, we'll walk around without paying attention to what's going around on around us. Um, and that's truly what the ambush predator is looking for, which the recidivist, right, the true bad guy is just an ambush predator. That's all they're doing. They're looking for the opportunistic attack, and they're looking for that person who's not paying attention. So really, it's not paying attention to constantly everything out there, because we can't live a paranoid lifestyle. And it's just so exhausting to do in the first place, right? That's living the cop's life. And un until you've had to do that for a while, that is exhausting. But it's really just anytime your environment changes in a certain in any way that makes you feel uncomfortable, or just seems odd to you, that's something to pay attention to. So really it's just listening to your senses of if your environment changes, which means you've got to generally have kind of a 360 degree environmental awareness of what's going on around you without the paranoid lifestyle, right? Just being like, okay, I'm pumping gas, everything's fine. But five minutes later, as you're finishing up, all of a sudden, Mr. and Mrs. Dirtbag show up in their hoopty, and it just doesn't seem right. Maybe they focused on you, right? Now it's time to pay attention to that type of thing. So really just paying attention to it. And anytime your klaxon goes off that says something's not right, is we us taking the time to pay attention to that and not dismiss it mentally. 
Um, I grew up in third world country, right in, in the jungles of Africa. And, and, and I found that the, my African friends were very attuned to what was going on around them because there was danger everywhere the second they stepped out of really their village. And, and so they became very attuned to what went on around them. But I found here in our first world countries, people are very relaxed and we don't pay attention to the bigger picture. So it's just really paying attention to the bigger picture. Um, and really you're just looking for the cues of danger. We all know that feeling when something doesn't feel right and it just doesn't settle the soul right and it just catches your attention. And if that's the case, pay attention to those cues. Look for the bulging vein in somebody's neck or head or hands. Look for the, the, the hands that are flexing, right? Because Mr. Bad Guy is also prepping for attack. Bad people always give off cues. It's very, very rare. I found in my cop career, in the, in the soldier career, it's very rare bad guys ever, or people just attack without any pre-cues. The pre-cues always come because they're preparing for a large moment for them too, which is attacking another human being. The only time you don't find cues I found in my experience was when somebody is on drugs and you just walked up to them and didn't pay attention to them. They're sitting there quiet and then they explode. Or maybe there's somebody who has a a different mental balance than the average person. And then they can just go off, they can spin off. So everyone else, the standard ambush predator always gives off cues. And really you're just looking for the cues that are there that aren't natural. And if you'll pay attention to what's not natural into those cues, you have a higher likelihood of avoiding the fight in the first place. And as Laura is basically saying, right? What's the best fight you would ever get yourself into? The one you avoid in the first place, right? Because you saw it in the first place, Therefore, you can get away with it, right? And though we might carry guns or we carry pepper spray or a baseball bat in the car, the last thing you want to do is employ that thing. And the way to avoid it is see danger first before danger gets to you, right? So we'll look for that sense of evil. Um, uh, listen to your gut. Listen to your instincts. Uh, I think that's something I think, as Laura said, like the large or the vast majority of Americans don't seem to pay attention to our guts anymore. We live comfortable lifestyles. And, and I think that if you hone it and spend time looking around for things that seem odd and weird, you're starting to hone your perception of your situation around you to where like a muscle, it grows. So anytime you can start looking for things that seem off and then maybe put a, a car between you and things, things that seem weird, or maybe put a grocery cart between you and things or people that seem weird, or maybe, you know what, I've walked down this grocery aisle and something seems weird about that odd, that odd person there. Maybe I'll go to the next aisle and come back to this later once they vacate that. Something like that, right? Be willing to walk away from things if it just makes you feel a little weird. Again, it's not living paranoid. It's just going, you know what? I want to avoid it in the first place if I can. There's no reason to put myself into something that could be questionably odd. Therefore, I'll go away until I know it's okay. Um, next, somebody mentioned in the chats the if-then drills. Um, I get that. We use that in the military world, in the police world, in the SWAT world all the time, if-then, meaning if something happened, then I'll do this. But if this happens, then I'll do it this way. And as it changed, then I'll do this. I'd like to try to get the gun world to kind of return it as when-then. Instead of if-then, it's when-then, right? Because somebody even in this chat here, at some point in time, your day is coming. Somebody in this, in this chat room right here is coming, right? Your day of evil visiting you will come to somebody in our lifetime. So it's really more looking at when then instead of if then, because I want you to mentally prepare for the fact it most likely will come at some point in your lifetime. Therefore, you've got to prepare for it. When I see people do the if then drills, which is the common terminology, oftentimes people stand there and freeze when it does happen, because though they might've said, if it happens, I'll do this but they don't really believe it'll happen. I want you to believe it can happen to you. Therefore, if I could change the terminology of when then, when this happens, I will then do this. And as it changes this way, then I will do this. But if it's this way, then I will do that. And if we can change that terminology and realize it's coming someday. For somebody in this room, it is absolutely coming. So changing that 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 mindset, I think is a good, uh, uh, a good idea. And then she mentioned too, like you go to a restaurant, right? You sit with your back to the door, whatever it may be. Can I really add to that and say, start looking at it from the bad guy perspective. If you've gone into a place, a store, a restaurant, I don't know, you're at the park. 
wherever it is you go, look at it from the bad guy perspective that if you were the bad guy, if you were to come into, let's say a restaurant that you're at, where is the most, the flow of the natural bad guy? Most bad guys are right-handed, right? It's just how it is, right? God loves us right-handers, not too many left-handers. So therefore, most of us right-handers, we tend to, when we open doors, depending on how the door opens, flow to a certain area. So therefore, you've got to think, okay, bad guy is going to probably come in this way, probably a right-handed person come in here. Now, can I sit myself, my observation point offline from where the most likely attack is to happen? Does that make sense? Really, from the active shooter perspective, you're always going, okay, and if I was the bad guy and I was going to attack this place or attack myself at this place, how would I approach me and how would I do that? Once you learn to do that, now you start learning to position yourself in ways to where you're always at the best advantage. So you're not put yourself in the ambush cone of a bad guy. So you can always be offline from where the bad guy might come from. Does that make sense? So really kind of just always setting yourself up offline from where the natural point of attack would be or a natural approach point for a bad guy bad guy could come from um and then also she mentioned you know be ready to win within your mind right um to to not only work through these situations of when then but always come to the conclusion of when i found that was important in the in the in the let's say the dynamic world that i was in it was always important to always win right? Treat yourself with one, the respect you deserve in your training, but always conclude in your training that I'm going to win this and how this is how I'm going to win it. And this is even how I'm going to feel when I win it, right? That I'm going to be glad that I dominated that situation, that it was right and righteous for me to dominate that situation, to win that. And I'm going to be okay with winning even violently if I have to, but I'm going to win for the betterment of my own people and for my own survival. So go that further route of celebrating that win in your mind, not just see the win, but celebrate the win in your mind. And this doesn't apply to the gun, but it applies to everything else. And everything you do, whether it's business, loving your husband, your wife, your kids, whatever it is better, always win in that case and learn how to do so, so it applies to everything you do. Then further, right, she talked about how does scenarios help? The more realistic you can make the scenarios, and I'm not talking, right, the Martians are invading, the zombies are coming, I'm not talking ridiculous stuff, look at it in the context of your life. We all live different lives. Laura, obviously, is a cat lady, sits around and pets cats all the time, right? So maybe in her cat life area, she has a different lifestyle than I do, who's a dog lover. So maybe when I look at it from the aspect of I'm out walking my dog, because cat people can't walk, can't walk their people, or walk their cats. When I'm out walking my dog, if I get approached by the pit bull or Mr. Bad Guy or whatever it is, how am I going to be on this? How am I going to act and react on this? Or when I pump gas, because I pump gas this way, I'm going to do this. Or let's say, let's take a uh, Let's say Casey here, right? Casey's sitting on, on here and her hunk of hunk of burning love, her husband is a firefighter, right? So his life might revolve around firefighting. If he gets in a firefighting incident where somebody attacks him, which does happen, how would he defend himself versus Casey, who's really a work at home mom, who does some pretty cool stuff online, by the way, um, how should she defend herself if she gets attacked in her home? Or let's say Patricia here, right? She's running around doing her stuff in Montana. The attack that might happen to her is going to be different than the attack that might happen to Casey or to me or to Laura. We all live different lives. Find the realistic scenarios and the most likely places you're to be attacked in and start envisioning when then drills in the context of your lifestyle, not just somebody else's out there. I have personally 12 different scenarios that I've built up in my mind. I've worked in through the, on the with then drill in a million different scenarios all the way through. And guess what? I've had to use four of those at different times in my life. And I'm only here today because I thought them through to, to, to nuance. So I'm asking you to do the same thing. Take your lifestyle that's different than everybody else's and start realistically thinking it through and with with the, or when then drilling this thing to the depth you possibly can. Uh, next, something Laura brought up is ego takes a back seat, right? If you carry a gun, you strap on a knife, you carry a pepper spray, ego takes a back seat to this. For us guys on this thing, I think we could learn from the ladies. Right. Ladies don't tend to puff up their chest and get all mad and jump into the bar fight. It's us dudes that do that. Right. Ladies tend to go, you know what? I'm not going to jump into that bar fight. I think if we men learn from the women that, hey, we don't have to worry about our egos in this thing. 
we would oftentimes tame down some things that tragically go violent. So ego has to go to the go to the back seat on everything. The second you strap on a gun, it really take on the defender's mindset. And I think in this group, that's probably a natural thing. But just to reinforce it, I wanted to say that. Um, next, uh, she talked about what I call the, the four friends, right? Uh, she talked about always have an exit. I would tell you your four friends are uh, time, distance, air barriers, and an exit, right? If you can always in your when then drills set up to wherever it is you're at, that you've always set yourself up for, okay, this is the position that's giving me the most time to respond to a sudden unexpected attack, or this is the best place that might be able to buy me more distance or give me as much distance as possible, right? And time or distance are somewhat corollary to each, to each other, but also what's my barriers, right? In the, the uh, what is it, Greenwood Mall shooting that happened in Indiana, a couple of days ago, it sounds like Mr. Hero, Mr. Dickinson, or whatever his name is, ran up out of a bathroom, putting himself behind a large post, stabilizing on the post and making shot. He used a barrier to make him smell to smaller target. Anytime you can put big things between you and bad people, the better off you are, the more it buys you time and distance to in a sense, but barriers are massively helpful, right? If I lived in Laura's house, and I was Laura, I'd put maybe big old Justin between me and the bad guy. He's a great barrier, right? Or better yet, maybe cars, posts, gas pumps, anything else, always find barriers. And next, time distance barriers and an exit. Your next best friend is always an exit. Have a way to go away because the best fight you'll ever get into is the one you avoid in the first place, preferably even if you have to because your situation awareness failed you, the one you run away from, right? So again, ego has no no balance to the gun carrier, we should be willing to run from the fight because we're not in an offensive mindset.